Listen, whenever there is trouble in your life, whenever there is chaos going on in your life, there is only one thing that will get you through it, and that is a word from the Lord. Why don't you join in with us as we join Greater Joy Incorporated live with a word from the Lord. This will change your life. And the scribes are having some conversation and they are having a conversation concerning the fact that they, his father here is struggling with he brought his son to them. And look at what happens the scribes in verse 3. He asked the scribes, why question ye with them? And one of the multitude answered and said, listen what he said, Master, I have brought unto thee my son, which hath a dumb spirit. And wheresoever he taketh him, he teareth him, and he foameth and gnasheth with his teeth, and pineth away. And I spake to thy disciples, and they should cast him out, and they could not. He answered him and said, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you, and how long shall I suffer? Bring him to me. And they brought him unto him, and when they saw him, straightway the spirit tear him, he fell to the ground, wallowing in foam, and he asked his father, here it is, how long is it since this came unto him? He said of a child, and oft time it has cast him into the fire, into the waters, to destroy him. But if, here it is, here it is, here it is, GJ. But if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us. That's my prayer. I'm going to say it again. If, if they, I'm talking to Jesus now. If thou can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Listen to what Jesus is saying back to us. Jesus said unto him, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. The father said, if thou can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. And Jesus said, if thou can believe, all things are possible unto him. The, the father said, if thou can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. And Jesus said, if thou can believe, all things. The, the father said, if thou can, have, can, can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. And Jesus said, if thou canst believe, all things are possible. Greater joy said, if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us and Jesus said if thou canst believe all things are possible look at your name and tell them I don't have no doubt no doubt no doubt no doubt have your seat let's see if we can make that live I'm sure most of you live in a a, a circle or a life where where you like to live in the highlights of life we love the pinnacles of life, the, the good days. We love the days when things are going well. M -m most of us, most of us live and, and, we, and, and we love the spiritual highs, those times when God is moving powerful and, and, and you have this strength within you that declares to every devil that shows up, come on if you're coming. Yeah, you have those days when nothing can shake you and nothing can get you all killed. You ever had those days when you felt so strong, no matter what folks said to you, it didn't matter. You just said, you said as they approach you, if you're coming, come on, because the blood of Jesus makes all the difference. Yeah, we like those days when things are, are at their pinnacle and, and it looks like nothing is impossible. I love those times, but... I found out, I found out that it is hard to stay on the mountaintop. Yeah, some days you're going to be on the mountain, but then there are days you're going to be in the valley. Yeah, I found, I found that old song that, y'all know that old song that says, no matter, you know that song, that song that says that, that there, there got to be a little rain sometime. 
Yeah, all of us have been there, right? Where, where, where things are good and we, we're on our mountain. But let me just share with you, if you're going to have mountaintop experiences, you must come off the mountain to get to your next mountain. And, and in between the mountains, there are some valleys. And you've got to get used to in your own life that there are going to be the mountain top, but I'm prepared for my valley. Yeah, yeah. When we fear, when we fear valleys, it is those times uh, that we miss. We can't cope with, and we begin to struggle. And and I would like to take a look at these disciples because they show us today that it doesn't matter how high you get. Every now and then, you're gonna have some dark days. Yeah, anybody in here ever had a day where money was good? And then the next week, you're trying to figure out how you're going to make ends meet. Yeah, highs and lows of life lets us know in this text here, the disciples, these men, average men that had been traveling with Jesus. They have been where Jesus saw firsthand miracles. They, they saw Jesus calm a storm. These disciples saw Jesus, they saw Jesus feed 5,000, not including women and children. They saw Jesus feed 4,000 on another occasion. They saw Jesus heal somebody from their disease. They saw Jesus raise folk up from the dead. They saw Jesus turn water into Astes Pamante. They saw Jesus work some miracles in life y'all act like y'all don't know what Austin Spavante is uh, but, but I came here to let you know that even though they had seen the highs of life now they're in the midst of trouble because uh, somebody shows up with an issue they tried to heal him but they could not yeah, there are going to be some days. That they, uh, look, look at it. It, it is in, in chapter 9. Uh, we, we pick up the story where we, we, we believe that it can help us wrestle with this thing called doubt, doubt because disciples are arguing with religious leaders and things are probably not going well for them. Let, let me just interject. No matter who you are and how honorable your intentions are and motives are, there is going to be some folk in your life that's going to oppose you. Yeah, there's some, I found out, uh, uh, real quickly, I'm almost there, I found out that these are church folk. Oh, yeah, uh, I think y'all gonna help me here in a minute. Uh, th these are not folk on the street, these are the scribes and the Pharisees. These are folk in church, and these are the folk opposing Jesus, harassing him and his disciples relentlessly, and determined they are embittered and they are downright, oh, let's put it this way since y'all ain't gonna help me. They downright hateful folk. In the church house, a group of you, have you ever run into folk like that at church? Yeah, they're supposed to be, they're supposed to be uh, children of God, but they're just downright hateful. Yeah, Y'all ain't going to help me, let me move on because, and, and, and the issue becomes that many times uh, the reason folk are struggling with you uh, is because of differences in what we believe in doctrinal things. I find churches fighting uh, based on doctrinal issues. Jesus has come uh, yellow day with a different look on the life of the Christian church and folk are upset because he's not filling them up with laws but he's filling them up with love I love that about Jesus because I'm the kind of person uh, I have a hard time with a whole lot of laws but I don't have a hard time with the fact that I know that even when I broke the law he loves me anyhow I, I'm not talking to y'all sanctified folk, y'all super saved sanctified folk. They don't never break the law, but for me, folk like me that find themselves struggling with the law sometime, I'm glad to know that he still loves me. When they ask him here in the text, and they hear in the text, they're asking him to defend these ancient, uh, these these ancient, these, these ancient uh, uh, traditional landmarks. And Jesus steps into the scene, and when he steps in, he asks, "What are y'all arguing about?" And then, when the story really begins to unfold, a father speaks up. Listen to what he said, "Teacher, I brought my son who is possessed by a spirit that he was that he has been." 
robbed uh, of his speech whenever it seizes him, it throws him down, foaming at the mouth, gnashing at the teeth, and, and, and he becomes, I asked your disciples to drive him out, but they couldn't. Mm -hmm, Y'all missed it, uh, chapter 9. There. It must have been embarrassing because these are the folk hanging out with Jesus. And if you hanging with Jesus, you ought to at least have a little power. Every now and then, uh, if you hanging out with Jesus, you ought to at least be able to get a prayer through. And what I'm finding out is that folk turn to us for deliverance. And we can't deliver them because we don't have the power to get a prayer through. Yeah, y'all ain't going to help me, but it's all right. Something has happened. They are unable to free this boy from the demonic grasp on his life. Why, Bishop? Because they, they had been paralyzed with doubt. They had failed, and then they began to doubt. And I, I put it this way this morning. Sometimes you got to be careful because doubt is like a, it's like a fire hydrant on your faith. Doubt will put out your fire. Yeah, doubt will cause you. Anybody had failure in the house? And, 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 and I've gotten to the point sometimes, let me just be honest, I've had some situations with church that caused me not to want to go to church. I, it just put out my faith based on stuff that go on in church. It make me not want to go to church. But I came here to let the devil know today that he lost again because I found out that my faith ain't got nothing to do with folk in church. I'm supposed to be hooked up and tied up in God. Yeah, and I came to praise him no matter what. So when we look at the text here, when we look at the text here, the gospel, the genealogy of Christ, in case you don't know, what you find is that, is fine, is that John moves uh, from the manger and exhumes Genesis by declaring that the, in the beginning there was a word. Yeah, in case you don't know, I know y'all I know y'all didn't uh, and didn't go to Sunday school, so let me just throw this in for you. In case you didn't know, everything uh, before the foundation of the word, everything starts with a word. Yeah, yeah, everything. While you're sitting in here, at, wait, while you're sitting in here this morning, if you're gonna make deliverance, it's gonna start with a word. In your mama's womb, it came by way of a word. And uh, you gotta remember and understand that that in Jeremiah 29 11, the Lord, the word says, "For I know your plans I have for you. They are plans of for you for good and not for disaster. Plans to give you hope and not and, and hope and a future. All of this began." with a word when you look at your life it's going to start as soon as you receive a word are y'all here with me today now, I've come this morning to share with you that the problem then is that we're holding on to a word that God didn't give us yeah, the word that he didn't give us he did not give us the word doubt and many of us are holding on to that word. Many of us are holding on to one word that was never spoken over your life. God never spoke that word doubt over your life. God has never given you the spirit of fear and doubt is the cousin to fear. And whenever you have doubt, then you lose your hope. Ah, there, there is a, it is here that I want to I wanna catapult on it because uh, when, I, when I look at this, I, I, I went to the dictionary, Miriam Webster, and I looked up the word doubt. Uh, 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 Dr. Crane, I looked up the word doubt, and the word doubt uh, spelled D-O-U-B-T, doubt, doubt, doubt. Y'all say that with me, doubt, doubt. Now, now, now doubt, now, y'all stick by, I'm going to holler in a minute, but just let me, let me paint my picture here. Uh, a doubt, D-O-U-B-T, uh, the word B, the letter B in doubt, uh, don't suppose to be there. Uh, because there is no sound of B in the word doubt. Uh, Y'all ain't gonna help me. I, I went to public school and I've always tried to figure out where the, where, where the letter B came from uh, because B don't mean nothing. I know y'all went to KIPP and y'all went to the special schools and all this stuff, but I went to public school and in public school, I'm trying to figure out where the B came from. And because the B doesn't belong there. So as I, as I vacationed this week, I was trying, I said, Lord, can you help me understand? And, and all I could hear the Lord declaring was B means bondage. 
And, and so doubt, when you have doubt and you have a, a, the, the, word, the, the letter B is stuck in there because doubt and bondage go together. Are y'all following me here? I'm going to get you out. Hang on. Hang on a minute. And then I went to Miriam Dictionary and I found out that there are only two words that begin with D-O-U-B-T. D-O-U-B. There's only two words in the dictionary. There's some root. These are the two root words. A lot of stuff spurns off of it. But there's only two words. D-O-U-B. Only two words that begin with that. One of them is doubt and the other one is double. Uh, y'all didn't grab that so, so there, there's two words in there one is doubt D-O-U-B-T uh, and the other one is double D-O-U-B-L-E uh, and, and so those are only two words that are derivative of D-O-U-B uh, and, and I started digging with that thing and trying to make it make sense in my mind uh, and I said oh God I said devil I see why you want me to have doubt because you're trying to keep me from double uh, yeah, I went to public school. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let me go back to that. I went to public school. I know all of y'all went to the private schools. and I went to public school. And in public school, they taught us that, that double means two. Uh, which means that whatever it is uh, that I've been struggling with, I, I can have one or two derivatives. I can have doubt or I can have double. And I came to prophesy over the house in here this morning. You can have doubt or double. I don't care which one you have. It's up to you. I'm going to present to you two opinions. You can have doubt or you can have double. But as for me, as for me, I came here to declare to the enemy that you ain't going to hold me in doubt because this is my season of double. Oh, my Lord. And can I help somebody in the house? If you're going to have double, you can't have doubt. And if you have double, if you're not going to have doubt. You can't have two because they don't go together. And so here, here it is. I'm going I'm to I'm close it up right here. How about you elbow in your neighbor real quick. Tell him I believe I'm going to have some double. Uh, I, I, as a consequence, the devil is trying to hold you up. I think I lost you. When you have doubt, you automatically disqualify yourself from double. Whenever you have doubt, you can't have double. You automatically count yourself out. I came here to let you know I don't believe there's nothing I can't do. I don't believe that there's anything that holds me up. I believe that God gave me the power to do anything. You can sit there and say, well, I can't do such and such and such. Well, I don't believe that. I think I can make a watch if I put my mind to it. I think I can do anything. God, help me in the house. Is anybody going to help me preach in here this morning? Slap your neighbor high five and tell them I believe I can do anything. I want to say a word to the person that's sitting to your right because you ain't receiving this. Uh, I want to tell the person on your right. I want to tell that person on your right. Uh, this is your year that the enemy is going to see you get a double take. Uh, my, 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 my. This is your year. This is your year. The enemy going to look around trying to figure out how you got to where you are. Uh, they saw you last when you didn't have nothing. You were still living down there and couldn't hardly make ends meet. And then they turned back around. You got your degree. They turned around. You got your own business. They turned around. You done finished school. They turned around. You done raised your children. They turned around and everything going good for you. Uh, just slap your neighbor high five. Tell them double tape, double tape. Some of you can't say much in here because you ain't been through nothing. Some of y'all in here came, they ain't been through hell and high water, but this is my year. I'm getting ready to get double for my trouble. Yeah, I made it on a single income, one raggedy car. I, I just could make ends meet. I just could pay my bills. But I got up this morning, ate whatever I wanted to, put on what I wanted to, drove what I wanted to, looked at what I wanted to put on. Are y'all going to help me in how anybody in here ever had to eat lonely sandwiches because you had to and now you eat them because you want to? Tell your neighbor double, double, double. I got to stand on the word of God. If you get a word in your life, it'll change everything. If you're faithful over a few things, God's going to make you ruler over many. Yeah, help me preach it in the house. Tell your neighbor, this is your year. God is going to give you double. The canker worm tried to eat it all up, but God going to give you double. If you refuse to let the enemy plant a seed of doubt in your life, God going to give you double. Somebody shout double. The enemy does not want you to say it out loud. Shout double. The enemy don't want you to say it out loud. Shout double. 
Somebody's already seeing your breakthrough. Somebody's already seeing the enemy trying to shut you up. The enemy wants you to be quiet. But I came down to the valley to holler, devil! Hey. I feel my hump coming on here. Uh, double, double, double income, double income, double income, double income, double anointing, double anointing, double breakthrough, double faith, double, 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 I feel something in this room in here right there. I feel somebody say double. Now you can't speak double and speak doubt at the same time. I only want you to say double if you believe it with all your heart, your mind, and your soul. You can't make me doubt him. Woo! Pull your neighbor down. Tell him, sit down. Double, double, double. This brings me to my text. Uh, Yellow day, I feel like preaching now. This brings me to my text. Uh, uh, here, here it is, Elder Wortman. The text declares uh, and that we see here that God is ready to work. He says, uh, he says, not if he, the Father says, if you can have compassion on us, help us. Uh, and God says, if you can believe, all things are possible. Y'all got that? And so what are you saying here, preacher? What we find when we find doubt, uh, make sure you get this, uh, doubt is a spirit. Mm -hmm. uh, what are you saying spirit spirit it's a spirit the first thing that the spirit does uh, the spirit has taken position and power not only in the boy's life uh, but in the father's life uh, and in the disciple's life everybody is mixed up because the text says uh, here that there was a spirit uh, that took over his life look at it it doesn't take possession of his hands it doesn't take possession of his legs it doesn't take possession of his mind the text says uh, that it took possession of his speech which lets me believe i'm almost done y'all better help me preach right here which lets me know uh, that there is power in your speech and let me give you some scripture come here come here the power of life and death uh, is in your tongue so whatever you want you gotta first of all uh, be able to speak it out of your mouth uh, i don't think you heard me in here so the problem is uh, that this boy he has trouble uh, and his problem is not that he can't see uh, his problem is not that he can hear or walk or or, or have his very being uh, but the problem is he can speak and, and in this season I want you to understand uh, that the demonic spirit is not after your house uh, but after your mouth uh-huh let me get right there so all of you intellectual folks uh, that come to church and think that it don't take all of that uh, oh yeah yeah y'all at the wrong church uh, because here we believe uh, that when praise goes up uh, blessings come down and so when you come into this house you got to make sure that you understand uh, that this is not a time this is not a time for you to be silent and quiet uh, cute and quaint uh, acting like you got it all together the truth of the matter is you got a bill that's due and you don't know where the money is coming from and I came here to give you some instruction if you need a breakthrough what you got to do is open up your mouth uh, do me a favor grab everybody around you and tell them you got to speak it you got to speak it Jesus walks upon this conversation and he finds this conversation and the father is lamenting about his son who has been filled with a spirit that refuses to let him speak double into his life in verse number 18 the father says here it is I'm gonna go home right here the father says I took him to your folk let me rewind that the father says I took him to your people the father says y'all didn't get it I took him to 1711 10th Street and I thought that some folk over there at GJ had power to deliver my boy. But when I went there, all of them were sitting in there with their arms crossed, legs crossed like they were somebody. And I was trying to figure out why my son couldn't get delivered. 
and I realize you can't expect folk that don't believe in deliverance to get nobody else delivered. So, oh God, I feel like preaching in here now. So when you come to greater joy, understand we believe in deliverance. Yeah, you can't go to some places. I don't let everybody lay hands on me. Because if you don't believe in deliverance, then I don't want you praying for my deliverance. Y'all ain't gonna help me in here. Whenever somebody shows up to pray for you, here's what you do. Before they pray, look them dead in their eyes and say, for real though, do you really believe that what you getting ready to pray for me for, that God can do it for me? And if they say, well, I don't know, tell them, boy, get your hands off me because I can do bad by myself. I need some folk that believe that God can deliver. How many of you saw him heal some people? Seeing God turn some stuff out of our doubt. Have you ever been broke and then mysteriously got a check in the mail? Have you ever had your down to your last dime and found money that you know won't yours in your pocket? Oh, I seen God work it out. Shot somebody high five, tell them deliverance is on this road. I don't believe that you ought to sit with me if you don't believe that God can bring me through because I came to let somebody know that the Father declared I thought your staff could deliver him. I thought your deacons could get him out I thought your preachers had power but when I got in there they were acting like the rest of the folk so did it find sanctified and super holy but as for me and my house I believe that if there's gonna be a breakthrough come here Isaiah yeah, they said that when they got down in the valley, that there was a rumbling in the valley. Said that the bones began to come together. How did you know that the bones were coming together? Because there was some noise in the valley. Can I help somebody in the house? Where you gonna find deliverance is where you gonna find people that have life. People that's sitting there with their eyes all curled up. Saying I sure wish they'd hurry up and shut that service down. Them the wrong folk to sit with in church. But grab you somebody and tell them I don't have no doubt. My faith looks up to thee. There's getting ready to be a shout in the room. That's going to give the devil a nosebleed. He's going to get upset because you're supposed to be crying. But God brought you through all over again. Somebody said you won't go make it. But you got another call and letter in the mail. That said, I got room for you. Can I preach like I feel it in the house? Do me a favor. Why don't you open up your mouth and tell your neighbor everywhere your soul shall tread, everywhere your soul shall tread, everywhere your soul shall tread. Your soul shall tread. We hope that something was said or done that has impacted your life. Whatever you need, whatever you desire, it always comes through the word of God. Tune in next week or next time with us. God bless you. May heaven smile upon you.